St. Benedict tells us that each person is a unique creation of God and that we should be mindful of everybody, not exclude anyone who is different from ourselves or uh, people that we haven't met with before and so on. And in here he says, this is the, the rule of St. Benedict, and all these values come out of this little document, 73 chapters in here. It's based on scripture, and also these values are based on tradition of this particular Benedictine community. And in here, uh, Benedict tells us that we should always be the first one to accept the other person, that we should vie with each other to be the first in accepting someone else. Whenever we meet people, we either influence them for good or not, and that I don't ever know whether that's going to make a difference in people's lives, but I'm always hoping that somehow, some way, some good will come of how I treat people. And so uh, seeing them, seeing Christ in other people certainly is what makes you be able to treat them with dignity and respect. Well, I think the value that has always resonated the most with me is the value of respect. And I think that is so key for any leader to have this deep respect for every single individual that is working within their organization. And it is so important that, they, that the leaders respect the skills and the talents of everyone. If you look at how Christ treated people, he never treated anybody with disrespect, even, even when he was chastising them. He, there was always that sense of respect for them as people. And I think because he knew who they were, that they were God's creation. And, and so um, I don't think any, anybody is not deserving of respect. Sometimes it's not, it's not always easy to seek Christ in other people. Sometimes it's hard to see, but to just keep reminding ourselves of who they are, that some place in that human being there is God, and that demands respect. You can identify a Benedictine house by the hospitality, and other sisters comment on that. You know, like the Franciscans emphasize poverty, and uh, the charity sisters taking care of the poor, things like that. But Benedictinism is broad, and we don't have one particular kind of work, like just teaching or just nursing. We do whatever work needs to be done in the area where we find ourselves. And hospitality means that you welcome all people and do whatever you can for them. It's the idea that we're all creatures of God. I think hospitality and respect are quite closely related. And of the two, I tend to focus on uh, respect. Hospitality has aspects of respect. It stresses more being open always to everybody and being um, willing to accept other people's ideas and thoughts and being open and welcoming to everything that would 
be put forth by another individual. Certainly hospitality in terms of uh, an open front door like we try to have at the monastery and welcoming everybody and helping them to feel very comfortable and very uh, recognized and welcomed is a key element of hospitality. And that, I think, is recognized around the world as a tenet of the Benedictines, that great, great effort put forth in the area of hospitality. I think another little part of hospitality is being open to change and new ideas. Because we can be open to people, we need to be open to concepts and ideas too. Another one that doesn't come up, it is not in the top five that the college chose or the top four that the sisters chose, the top four that the Benedictine health system uses, um, is one of adaptability. Uh, Benedict was strong on that. You, you wouldn't find the Benedictines surviving more than 1,500 years if there hadn't been adaptability. Um, and this, it, it goes along with hospitality, I guess, in the idea of openness to ideas and a willingness to change. Even the, the switching of the library and chapel space, we adapted, uh, we had this very high ceiling, lovely chapel, but it was up a flight of stairs and many of the sisters were older and infirm and it was really difficult to get up. And the, the college was caught in the small library and no place else to go. Um, and uh, just to switch the spaces worked really well, but a willingness to adapt. The values I personally wanted to see in students um, were commitments to values, commitments to one's word, uh, a work ethic, a strong sense of justice and fairness, and um, caring, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I personally feel that we've never had the dog-eat-dog -dog atmosphere that is prevalent very often in larger schools, where um, six people are in a department and one is going to get a promotion and the other five are resentful or whatever. We, I, I, I don't feel that we ever had anything like that. And I think that's true among the students. I used to watch the students be pleased when another student succeeded, gave a good oral report, got an A on a paper, that didn't happen very often, but uh, <laughs> when it did, it, Everybody felt good. Somebody had achieved. And um, that's the kind of thing that I still see here today. You know, values are not learned overnight and they aren't lived overnight. It's a process. And um, we have to take those values off the walls and off that piece of paper that they may be stated. We have to get them into our, our bones so that we can live them. And it, it's a lifelong learning process. And so we continue to grow, we continue to change. The more that we study the rule of St. Benedict, our values, and just from our lived experience. I think generally uh, I would stress the importance of balance in life. And for Benedictines, we have work and prayer. We also have leisure. Benedict didn't write a lot about leisure, but he certainly uh, referenced it and uh, talked and wrote about work and prayer. It is so important to have all three elements in your life to be healthy, I think, and finding the right balance. Now, there may be times when work takes a priority or prayer or leisure, but overall, I think balance is extremely important. You have to be highly organized as an individual. 
And uh, it, that's a gift, too. And I think if you can be organized enough so that you don't let one facet of your life crowd out everything else, you're on your way to some kind of balance. But I think balance is one of the hardest things for everyone because we are so individual and uh, you have to make a studied effort to carry that out. And then you have to have a strong will to not let every wind that blows come in and change you or move you to something else or take all your time. So a lot of it, I, th I think, comes right down to common sense. And you do what you have to do. And when things don't turn out to be perfectly balanced, you hope for another chance, another day, another time, another location, whatever. But you go on. The other, I haven't even mentioned this um, value, the other one that I've become a lot more aware of in all the years is stewardship. And uh, as we uh, find resources dwindling, whether they're financial resources, the resources of the earth and the world, uh, and we see that we really aren't going to have enough to go around, and we need to be very good stewards of, of everything in order to continue providing the service that we need to provide. In terms of what has been a challenge, sometimes hospitality you know, if you're just really tired, you would just like to crawl into a hole and, <laughs> with a good book. <laughs> and um, you might not want to be quite so outgoing. Or if you really have a mindset, then it's sometimes difficult to be open to other ways of looking at a thing. Uh, so I suppose that would be the most challenging. You know, it's one of our mottos as Benedictines. You know, if you look at the middle of the Benedictine yes. cross, it always has pox, which is peace. If we can achieve an inner peace among, in ourselves, and we can spread that kind of peace among other people, that little by little, we might someday have a world of peace. So we can't give up on that effort. It has to be part of, of what we do. And I, th I think if we can't be a peaceful people, it interferes with a lot of other good that we can do. If, if violence takes over our lives, it, it does something to us personally. And I, and I think we can't accomplish nearly what we could if we are not a peaceful people. Well, always remember this is home. No matter where you go, you can always come back here. Uh, and that's that sense of community. And uh, know that you're, you're supported. You're supported in prayers. Uh, with whatever you do uh, in your individual needs and in the, the broader context of your work. So you have that strength of community behind you. And let's hang on to a prayer life, adapt it as, as you would have it. Uh, Try for stability and feel that rootedness that if, if nothing else, hang on to the rootedness here. Well, I think I'd just like to, to say, say yes to life. You know, life is very precious. It's a precious gift. 
and it needs to be held gently, courageously, reverently in your hands. And always remember that you are Benedictine for having been here. So live the Benedictine values and you will make a difference and you will touch the world. Mm -hmm.